Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ, and today we are doing some leadership reflection. And a little bit of context, because this is my first video on this type. This is uh, part of this Maximum CEO course, well, made up part of it. And I'll be sharing a little bit of things that I learned during the course, and I do not claim any um, expertise on these matters. This is more of a thought processing, but I hope you find this. I hope this helps you process these thoughts and maybe helps you on that topic, learning that topic as well. So today uh, we were talking about communication as well as asking questions and specifically asking questions as the first major part or major tool within your communication skill set, I guess. So a little bit about performance this time. And because I haven't done these videos earlier, and because you might not have context, let's set up a context first and then go into this communication thing. So the context here is the so-called process, and specifically the Proverbs processor. That's one name, of, name for it. And I assume you have some knowledge on, on this matter at this point, even though this might be your first video watching this topic, but I, I assume for now that you have studied this topic a little bit, but I'll be explaining on the way as well. So what this process assumes, and that's a big assumption, I guess, is that we have godly communication and a team leader set up. So this is designed for a context where you are operating as a leader within a team. Of course, also works other way around when you are a team member in a leader's team. But we are assuming here that God speaks to the team and the team hears God and God speaks to the leader, just in case you, and that you hear God. Otherwise, go to some other course, I guess, <laughs> because this is for kingdom building. And communication here is what happens between the team and the leader, and leader and his team. And one kind of, well, first of all, the purposes of this whole communication thing is twofold. One, it is to build the kingdom of God, to create something that was not there before. It is not necessarily for management. It is for building new things so that the kingdom of God can expand. And that can be a business setting, that can be in a traditional church setting, that can be on your family, you know, many different aspects where the kingdom of God expands. But I would target this, this first, I would say that this is the first goal, at least in this assumed context here. You can apply it in other contexts if you want to. The second uh, goal there is to build the people within your team and the people within the kingdom of God. So bringing up the best in your team. So we don't only build the kingdom of God as in like, you know, buildings and stuff. More of the biggest increase in the kingdom of God happens when we increase in knowledge, in understanding, in operative effectiveness, you know, whatever. So Increase in learning, increase in people, increase in relationships is the biggest component within the uh, building skin of God. So keep that in mind. This is about building people, not about finishing projects. Although it is also about finishing projects, but people take priority here. Okay. That's important. And I personally find it interesting if you imagine this context in this way. Like we take the book of Proverbs and let's say you are the king here or a king, let's say. Let's give you a nice mustache, I guess. <laughs> Although if you're a woman, then you might have that more difficult to identify with, but whatever, you know, use your imagination. Now you're the king. And you have been so wise, such a wise king, that you have surrounded yourself with wise people. So you have this team here of 
wise people who God has given the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, so on and so forth. So they are really incredible people and God is speaking through them to you. But only in assuming that you are surrounded by them and you give them place to speak into your life. And you have this mighty goal of expanding to new territory and conquering the new land. That is conquering the world for the kingdom of God in this case. And so you have this awesome team with, with awesome wisdom that God has given them. And you look from your kingly perspective into that world. You look what in my kingdom needs to change. What kind of issues there are? What kind of reports I've been hearing? Basically, what needs to change so that I or you can achieve that vision that God spoke to you about? Because God spoke to you about this big kingdom here where people people prosper and things are well. And this go, things go like this, like he gave you a specific plan or a specific like, image or blueprint, how things should be in the kingdom. And your goal... Uh, as a person who fears God is to fulfill that plan or fulfill that blueprint make it a reality and for this purpose God has given you these people here your team and these people of course are mighty rulers and they also have teams so it's not just one person leading but they are also leaders and kings and princes their own uh, reign of area which is your strategic goal also to kind of direct them in that sense. But you're responsible for that macro vision. Okay, that's the setup. Now, in terms of communication and asking questions, the biggest goal in asking questions, or, well, I guess I should ask you, what do you think is the biggest goal in asking questions? Or have you ever thought about what you can do with questions or why they might be important? Personally, I think that questions are really good for drawing out that wisdom from your team. Because, uh, well, typically in, in like traditional world setting or church, well, even church, but in school setting, for example, we have this setup where the teacher is here about and he tells everyone what to do, where to go. And she's like, this is the answer, this is the answer, this is to do, do this, do that, whatever. Come on, you you know. And that's really not drawing any wisdom out of the people. You know, teacher doesn't, is not interested in hearing her, you know, class person's opinions about the material she's teaching. She's just wishing that they get good grades so that she can get a good, good paycheck, you know, whatever, if, if it's related to that. But, but here in the kingdom of God, we want, their wisdom out of the people into you. Why? Well, at least in the Proverbs, it says that multitude of counselors bring safety. And with good counsel or with good advice, you take on these great attempts like waging war. So <clears throat> wisdom is, is extremely important in accomplishing great feats courage and increase in the kingdom of God or like waging war. So that's why you want the wisdom, but how to get the wisdom? Well, one of the biggest shovels in your tool of, or arsenal of tools, I guess, is the art of asking questions. And some people are really good at this and I'm still learning, but questions are really interesting. And with questions, you can actually lead a person to think about things that they have never thought about, both in good and bad. And the world knows this, and the kingdom of God, people hopefully know this as well. So what can you do with questions? I already asked your question earlier, but what do you think? If you wanted to, uh, let's say, in your heart was this vision of a new school where children could like learn actually and prosper and increase and they could learn like godly wisdom and things like that. What would be the 
main questions you would need to ask yourself and your team. Would it be something like, what are we set to accomplish here? Or like, what are, what are the great standards that we want to stand for here and why? And what has God spoken about teaching or learning or studying? You know, those kind of questions. When you ask those questions from your team, you place them in a situation where you expect from them an answer. And that is a very good position for you to be in. Because that places them where you can actually get that wisdom out of them. And they might squirm and squiggle out of that. But you can all, always ask another question. Like, let's say they answer like, well, I don't know. And you can ask like, what could you ask in that sort of situation? If they said they did not. Well, one of my favorite questions in that situation is, if you knew, what would you say? just the classic question that works in interestingly well but with the expectation that they will give you an answer and with the expectation that um, God has placed great wisdom in them you can actually get much out of them but there's a huge role in what you expect from the people around you and how the whole positioning goes. And really, what's the purpose? Because oftentimes, let's say, for example, Tony Robbins writes really well about questions, has some good ideas about questions, I think. But often questions can be used in a manipulative way. Just maybe twist around or make someone suspicious, or not suspicious, but like... Uh, question their beliefs or take on your beliefs and you know it's a very strong mind control technique for one but really what it what is it used for so that's why it's in my opinion it's important to keep in mind that you want to build people and you want to build the kingdom of god so questions have great power both for good and for evil and not to forget that the world uses this technique as well a lot at least i think Although the world is more used to this command and conquer type of leadership. So what do you think about questions? Do you use them consciously? Have you a set of favorite questions you like to ask yourself? Or what are the typical questions you ask for yourself, like habitually? Sometimes I hear people asking questions like, Oh, why can I never make it in this area? Or, why am I so bad? You know. Why does these things always happen to me? Well, that's just inviting a really bad answer. Like, maybe you're just so stupid that you kind of do it, you know, whatever. It's just, with a bad question, can you expect a really good answer? So, I would advise becoming more conscious of that, because what happens if you ask that sort of questions habitually? What the kind of things will you learn? Will you discover good things or will you discover excuses to do poorly? What do you think? But what would happen if you change the question so you catch the questions of like, hey, now I'm, that was a really uh, unedifying question. What could be the better question to ask in this, this situation? What question could bring me forward in this area? Or what questions should I ask? What What are the best questions I've heard in my life? Uh, what kind of questions do these great leaders ask from their people? Or the, themselves even? It's a good question to ask, I think. Don't you think? But questions have great power to direct thinking or invite into thinking, as well as in digging that wisdom. From people but uh, expectations and the setup play a huge role out and that's about questions I think hopefully we'll be continuing about communication at some point because that's a really important tool that, or process that happens between you and your team how you exchange ideas how you do that different because you have different roles but how you 
operate within those roles so that people are built and the kingdom is built. And if I can ask you one final question, which I would like to hear actually your thoughts, not so that I wouldn't like to hear your thoughts on the previous questions too, but really, um, what do you think like in terms of building people and building the kingdom of God at the same time, what would be the most effective questions to ask? Or like, what kind of questions would help us to bring more revival into the kingdom of God? What kind of questions would help in um, bringing people out from worshipping mammon and actually enabling them to worship God and to serve God instead? And like, what kind of questions would we need to ask, you know, to build, build more the kingdom of God, build it stronger and build it more effectively and to actually build it instead of do everything else. So I would really like to hear your thoughts because uh, I'm just one person, but you have that spirit of wisdom and the spirit of might, spirit of courage, spirit of counsel within you. If you are uh, a member of the kingdom of God and if you have a relationship with God and if you don't have, just ask and he will give it to you for his kingdom building. But I, I think you have those. So I would like to hear your thoughts as well. Use that gift that you have. What What's the use of having that gift if you don't present your ideas ever? Another question. It's interesting how many questions you can ask, but how that question places you in a place of like, it's like a runner, you know, having that starting place, ready to run the race. That's the questions like setting up for the race. And immediately, most usually, your mind starts to like, what would be the answer? I want to answer that. It's interesting how there's such a curiosity for answering questions, isn't there? Anyway, do you remember what are the biggest questions that change your life? Or what are the most effective questions do you ask? Probably building the kingdom of God or, or building people around you. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts. See you later.